League One is a bottomless pit if you're a massive team that gets relegated into it. Sunderland, Bolton, Portsmouth, Ipswich, Barnsley, Sheffield United, Charlton have all had recent spells here in the last decade and struggled to get back out. This league is hell on earth if you're a big team that gets sucked into this division. And its latest victims are Birmingham. Now, they have been flirting with relegation for years, you know. They've not finished higher than 17th in eight years. It's been inevitable that they'd eventually meet the demise. There's been multiple survival miracle stories. I mean, that last-minute goal away at Bolton, that's one of my favourite videos ever. And they've come down with good points, tally. 50 points is a lot of points to go down with. The highest ever total to be relegated from championship is 54 with Peterborough so they're not that far off so they are one of the better sides to be relegated in recent years but they've not helped themselves they've not helped themselves with coming down for a start they sacked John Eustace who had him 6 feet table at time and yeah we're only 11 games but the point still stands Eustace then went to Blackburn and kept him up on last day over Birmingham they sacked him for a big shiny name like Rooney something that's it's very Birmingham isn't it they've done it before with Zola and the owners did promise that they get out of this division and they delivered just the wrong way. However, this is a really, really good time for them to be relegated with the state that the club's in financial-wise and the owners that they've got. Now, there's no guarantee that they'll be going straight back up. Obviously, you know, there's bigger teams than Birmingham that have come down here and been stuck for years, like I've just mentioned. But none of the other teams have come down in as good a position as Birmingham are. Relegation could almost be seen as a good thing here. They've got a chance to rebuild something other than a 60,000-seater stadium for Crawley at home and to carry momentum with them when they go back up or if they go back up. Not to be stuck in bottom six every year without making substantial change, without the risk of going back down. Similar to Ipswich, Mick McCarthy just kept him up time after time. Fans wanted a change, owners wanted a change, it saw him get relegated. But there's obviously the chance for him to do a recent Ipswich as well, if they can carry the momentum with him if they get promoted. The owners have put £30 million into infrastructure at ground. They've changed a lot of it. It's more than just a lick of paint at St Andrews. The stands have been repaired. They've got a new home dressing room. There's two fan zones outside at ground now. They've changed a lot in not a lot of time. And it's good for the fans as well. They've had cheaper tickets when possible. There's a supporters club. They're bringing in a lot of money now. Big sponsorship deals with Undefeated, an American brand. And despite I'm making a massive boo-boo out of the John Eustace manager situation, the public then came out and said that sacking him for Rooney were a mistake. They didn't hide away from it or anything like that. And they're getting money from all over the place, all these sponsorships and stuff like that. They've got five million quid for selling a Jude. They've got a lot of brass, Birmingham have. So it has been... A good time to come down, as stupid as it sounds, it's a good time for what were inevitably happening. There's obviously a manager change. It'd have been nice if Tony Mowbray were able to work because if he were in League One, they'd have absolutely pissed it by a mile. Very good manager. Him. But they've opted for somebody called Chris Davis, who's been a former coach at Swansea, Liverpool, Celtic and Leicester. He's currently the assistant manager at Spurs, or he was one of them. Um, and Birmingham spoke to over 40 potential managers, which included Lampard and Alex Neal. So obviously with the resources that they have, they can attract a lot of different profiles, can't they? Managers that's been there and done it, they can get some young and up-and-coming ones. They've had many different options or routes to go down and they've chosen this bloke. So you'd imagine that he's going to be half decent even though the majority of us have never heard of him. So I think that's already a good start. If you can interview that many people and come to this decision, I, I think it, it, must, it must be good. As well as the squad that they've come down with, they, this squad is too good for League One and that's without them, them doing anything. They've not even done anything yet and this squad is already too good. Jordan James, extremely talented footballer, who's only 19 at middle. Sanderson and Bielek at back, both solid, good ages, good experience, very good centre-backs. Defensively, I think they're really, really good. And that's what's going to have them near top of League One over anything else. Like They're not going to concede a lot of goals, especially at home. Like Big stadium tax is a big thing in this league. They've brought two new keepers in already. I'm going to talk about them in a sec. They've cleared a lot of the dead wood as well with players that they've released. They got rid of Roberts, Gardner, Hogan and Sunjic. These will be good League One players as well for other decent sides in this division. Like, it's not like they're getting rid of crap. These are all players that would start for a lot of other teams in League One and they've just thought, nah, they're not good enough for us. But that's a lot of experience there all going at once. These are players that have been at club for, for years. Roberts has been there for seven years, Gary Gardner six, Sunjik and Hogan both four years each. And it's good to get these wages off because it's players that don't play anymore. But I think the only potential negative for Birmingham at minute is letting so much experience leave at once. Excluding Jukovic, who's just had a new contract, which is also a very good business. The five players that they've released are the five longest-serving players at the club. And it's not that they've all been success stories there at all. Birmingham have been crap for a decade, so it's obviously not that. They're not, like, obviously talented players. But when you're getting relegated and then gutting out the players at the club who've been there longest and know how club works and know how fans work and new manager as well, it's a lot of big change all at once. 
and they might start quite slowly because of it. When you're coming up against teams that are like quite comfortable in this division, know what they are, they've got the managers and squad that's all the same quite often, they all know how each other plays. If you get someone like that quite early, like looking at Birmingham's fixtures, their first away game is Wickham. I could see them dropping points there because of the, the vast amount of change that Birmingham have got all at once going up against a team that sort of just knows what it is in Wickham. So there is potential for them to start quite slowly. But overall, bigger picture, they're definitely going to be near top. Do you know what I mean? They're not going to concede a lot of goals. They conceded two more goals than Southampton who got promoted in Championship last season. <laughs> You're focusing on that. This is a good Championship team that's been relegated. How have they gone down? Regardless, in League One, these are not going to lose many games at home or drop many points at home. But when you look at League One, the biggest teams with the biggest stadiums and biggest attendances always do best at home. Always. And that is exactly what happened last year with teams with uh, the eventual top three in League One. Obviously, Bolton didn't go up. But Bolton, Pompey, Derby all had that going for him. And it will be the same with Birmingham. Like, look at how many small teams are in this league, okay? You've got no disrespect to these clubs, but you are tiny. Burton's, Shrewsbury's, Wigan's. Do you know what I mean? Players for these teams are used to playing in front of a man and his dog. Then, randomly, for three, four, five games a year, they go to these massive Premier League grounds and shit the pants. I'm telling you, it happens with every club. Especially last season with Derby. I don't, I don't, I, off the top of my head, I don't know what Derby's own record was. Nobody wants to go there. Pride Park, it's like, wow, we're playing Derby. It, it's just all such a mental, in, in these players' heads. They just can't believe that they're there, sort of thing. Like the the, the the starstruck at the ground and the players and the the club that they're playing against, to a point where they just give them so much respect, sit back, and you just get slapped by by a lot of these bigger sides. And like I've just said, Birmingham, I think it'll be the same thing. If Birmingham get to a decent start, I think they'll go and beat an all year at home. If they if they can get past like first four or five at home when it's quite new and everything, they'll they'll absolutely smash this league, especially at home record. Like twenty eighteen when we last got promoted from this league, I'm just speaking on my own personal experience as a Barnsley fan. We went unbeaten at home all year. Luton went unbeaten at home all year. Sunderland lost one game. If, if you're a decent side, especially with an half-decent ground, you're not going to lose a lot of games at home. You're not going to drop a lot of points. And then to be added to what is already a very good squad, they brought in two very good keepers. Two very, very good keepers in Ryan Alsop, who played 37 games for all last season and is a Birmingham fan, and Peacock Farrell from Burnley. That is two top quality keepers for League One standard, man. And then to add to, add to that, they've signed Alfie May. What? If you're not familiar with League One or you don't know who he is, certified bags man. His last three seasons that he spent in League One, it were with Cheltenham for, for the first two. Who, you know, a small club, a weaker team like Cheltenham. He scored 23 goals and then 20. Before then going to Charlton last season and getting 23 goals, golden boots. For, is that a thing in League One? A top scorer in League One a Charlton team that was shit and finished 16th. That's 66 goals in three years for a team that's not even finished in top half once. Is a born finisher and in a team like Birmingham when they're going to be on top majority of games they're going to be dominating sides he's going to get a lot of chances he's going to put up some record breaking numbers. I'm just had a look the record season for goals scored in one season in League 1 is 35 by Jordan Rhodes that's when he was his best at Uddersfield years ago. I think Alfie May at about 30-ish. Probably more than 30. He's going to score a lot of goals anyway. But that shows the intent that they've got, Birmingham. It's so going to take top goal scorer in the league from a big club as well. It's not like they've gone and taken him straight from Cheltenham. It's a Charlton. Charlton are a big club and he's only been there a year. And they're just going, they're just going to yoink him. I remember seeing people say that Nathan Jones don't want him. I'll tell you what, Nathan Jones must have some magic powers if he can happily let top goal scorer leave to a team that's in the same division as them. I honestly think it's a stupid decision from Charlton, whether he wants him or not. But it's it's a no-brainer for Birmingham to get someone of this quality and who's going to get you guaranteed goals. They were linked with Windass as well, and that didn't make me laugh seeing that. <laughs> League One goals don't count, do they? So he's not going to drop to League One regardless of what money's offered. Scott Twine is another big one that's being rumoured. Um, I know it says there's a lot of time in this window, but I don't and I don't want to report on speculation from stupid accounts. But the calibre of player that they're looking at and getting in and flirting with a little bit is... Higher than that of anything anybody else in League One can look at. And when it comes down to it, and you get to nitty gritty, will they go straight back up? Um, I think it's an easy yes. Serious, I think it's an easy yes. A good number nine and a defensive unit is enough to have you up there majority of the time. And they've got exactly that already before even scratching its surface at transfer market. The squad that they've got by the time the season starts is going to be a mid-table championship team. You'd think it's going to be one of the strongest League One sides that's ever been seen. And obviously that doesn't guarantee you anything, does it? Teams can have really good players, they can have really good squads and get stuck here. But they are in a good spot to be challenging, not for playoffs, not for top two. 
they should be out of this league title, 100%. And even as a painfully biased Barnsley fan, I think they're nailed on to smash it to bits this league, seriously. And they'll be in a good spot then to build a bit of momentum and carry them away from being what were a constant, never-ending relegation battle and championship year after year. There's a real chance of them doing an Ipswich in a couple of years and get some momentum to take them somewhere proper. But, you know, let's not look into it too far yet. Euros aren't even done yet. Near might League One season starting before you're even looking at championship again. I do think they'll be very strong defensively. They'll have minimal, if any, losses at home. 100 points, 100 goals. <laughs> they are going back 100%. It is a long day for everybody else in this league, especially for one of promotion favourites, because... One at slots, unfortunately, has been taken before we've even started. But thank you again for watching. As always, make sure you subbed if you're new or if you're not new and you just decide to watch and don't sub. But yeah, thank you for watching. Love you all and we'll see you in a bit.